Saga is a global lighting industry organization with the focus on standardizing, for example, LED modules, electronic control gear, or connectors. So connectors are our topic today. Furthermore, sensing and communication modules are another key focus of Saga to be standardized and driving the vision and mission of Saga, which is enabling new markets for connected and serviceable lighting through interoperability. Hello and welcome to our Let's Talk Light session. Today we are talking about Saga, Saga which is now doing a big transformation within our market and we want to be ready and future-proof with this interface. My name is Valema Becker and I'm the responsible global product manager for controls and smart city. And today we are going to talk about uh, the session four. It's about Saga. Previously, we talked about uh, key consideration and top tips. The second session was about your route mapped out. The third one, the previous presentation was introducing the RPEC optic system. And uh, session five, which will end our Let's Talk Like session, is about Herbasense. There we're going a bit into the details about uh, our portfolio and linking this towards the Zaga interface we'll talk today. First of all, I will introduce you to Zaga Consortium. Zaga is a global lighting industry organization with the focus on standardizing, for example, LED modules, electronic control gear, or connectors. So connectors are our topic today. Uh, furthermore, sensing and communication modules are another key focus of Saga to be standardized and driving the vision and mission of Saga, which is enabling new markets for connected and serviceable lighting through interoperability. So Saga is aiming, to, uh, aiming, aiming for a circular lighting strategy. So durable, repairable and upgradable LED luminaires. And that will help us to have a more sustainable lighting. We have now a big change within the market and we see and feel that interoperability will drive our market furthermore into the right direction. And we see another big value by standards. And you see here now a USB interface. Probably everyone knows about that. It's a global, a st global standardized physical interface, which we will link to the protocol you can see here. And both uh, definition are creating an environment or infrastructure to plug and specifically different uh, devices towards our, for example, computer and using specific services. And this interface is globally accepted and well um, positioned in the markets. And this is exactly what is happening now within our outdoor lighting market. With the Zaga Book 18, you can see here on the picture, it has four pin interface. We are creating the same story, the same global standard uh, towards uh, our market. In combination with DALI for RAT, short name for it, D4i. Uh, we have a protocol which is a, an additional block of DALI 2. And with this, we are closing uh, the standards and creating with our luminous the backbone for a digital city. And uh, you can see here on the picture on the top of the luminaire and on the bottom side two interfaces. These interfaces are for the moment uh, closed with the ceiling cap IP66, but ready for the upgradability uh, when we have decided specially for the right technology later. So this interface um, is now a part of a luminaire and is closing the field devices to be ready for the IoT connectivity. On the top of this uh, interface, on the top of the luminaire, we're having two other standards. We're talking about UCIFI, which is becoming more and more um, interesting in the, in the market because they 
specify and define the interoperability exchange between different um, devices on the Luminaire. And with Talk, we ensure that all our D4i data are pushed towards the cloud and all the um, users are able to have same information from different Luminaires. And with this, we are able to drive uh, further our IoT solutions within the outdoor lighting market. So um, luminaires have to be certified under Zaga D4i. And you see here the certification. Uh, you can download uh, from the zagastandard.org website. And there we have more and more luminaires listed under Zaga D4i. With this, we have a seal of approval for future readiness. Why? Because the Luminar is now clearly specified for the upgradability. Here you see on the top of the Luminar, for example, our device called Orbasense RF Controller Saga Mesh. That's a Type A device. Because within the Saga DVI standardization, we have two types. It's Type A and Type B. And type A is typically a wireless controller, so the current control remotely uh, the luminaire and adjust parameters. Furthermore, you can read out the standardized D4i data. We are talking later about that. On the bottom side, we connect our sensor, which is called Orbasense Sensor Saga Peer, and it's a type B device. So it's an input device and it delivers specific data towards the luminaire and uh, all the parameters are taken by the controller and based on this profile schedule, you can um, use the luminaire with a predefined profiles. What is important to know about this type A and type B? Uh, especially for the installer on site, he will be more flexible in the future if he can really use different components or different sensor devices um, and combine them together. So we can only connect uh, towards the Luminar a type A device or a type B with an, with an implemented controller. What is as well possible, it's a combination. We can connect type A and type B, but what is not possible because you have then a mismatch within the communication inside the Luminaire if we connect two types A or two types type B. So there will be a kind of crash in the communication and the system will not work. With this uh, specification, we ensure play, uh, plug and play compatibility and a much easier uh, use for the installer on site and easier decision making process towards the end client, towards the city, to the decision maker to decide later once they have uh, defined the technology to adapt the right technology. Now going into further details, uh, what does D4i brings us? D4i is a protocol which has three main blocks. So if you connect on the top of the Luminaire um, the wireless controller and uh, we have a Saga D4i Luminaire, then we ensure that the D4i protocol are available. The first block is about Luminaire data. There we will get out the information about the Luminaire. For example, what kind of Luminaire it is. Zero Pro in that example. Furthermore, we have the information about the CCT, which is 4000 Kelvin. Light distribution is as well implemented inside the storage inside the driver, and it will be provided over the Luminaire. Then the second block is energy reporting. Here we're getting specific information about the consumption. For example, uh, the last consumption of the last night. Um, with the third block, maintenance and diagnostic, we will get further details to have a better, uh, better information about the health of the Luminaire. For example, we are counting over voltages and this over voltages will be provided towards, uh, towards the manager later on. Or we will have as well some further information about the uh, LED driver temperature. So, for example, if we have the situation that we have several over voltages, uh, much more than typically uh, accepted, 
then the manager is able to understand that there's a problem on site with a specific luminaire. He can send out the installation team and the maintenance team and can modify the wiring or upgrade this installation to make sure that the over voltages are not any more uh, not any more there and preventing the luminaire against damage. That kind of information is there as well. The uh, driver temperature will help to understand the life lifetime of a luminaire. So we can do later on as well prediction about the luminaire lifetime. And that will help uh, the city asset manager I'm calling in that case to better monitor the public lighting, manage it and control it in a completely different way because now it's standardized. So he has in front of uh, him, in front of his dashboard, all the parameters. And these parameters, so the DFI parameters, are coming from different luminaires, so with different vendors. And that will help him to have a tra better transparency than in the past, because in the past we had different parameters available from different supplier, and now it's uh, transparent to everyone. And um, with this DFI, we ensure this is compliant to talk to. That means all the data pushed towards the server are now protocoled and uh, in a way aligned between different suppliers. Going through the main reason or the main benefits of Saga Book 18, um, we are talking mainly about the future readiness. We see now more and more in the market that cities are talking about, uh, about this um, buzzword smart city. They want to go for it. They want to adapt new technologies, but they are not confident and not sure if this is the right technology right now. So in that case, they go for uh, luminaires with the Zaga interface and with and closing the uh, interfaces with the ceiling cap to be ready later on. Furthermore, they are then able to scale the installation within the city and later adapt the right technology they have found out in the market because we will have more and more uh, vendors uh, providing technologies because we have a global standard with that. And that will make the city's decision process easier right now, uh, especially they know they can upgrade later on the Luminaire. The second one uh, is the asset management. With this, we ensure that we know what's going on in the field. So we have all the information about the luminaires, the problems of the luminaires, and we can better plan all the maintenance uh, upfront. Why? For example, if we see that uh, LED module is uh, not uh, working or there is a damage on some specific components within the luminaire, we're able to understand uh, what failed and we can upfront um, order or prepare all the equipment for the maintenance on site. Furthermore, uh, the future adaptation uh, on the light schedule, for example, will be much easier because you can easily adapt, adapt that um, over your system and you can just push over towards specific luminaire this new lighting schedules and you're super flexible in adapting these parameters. For example, if a street uh, speed was changed from 50 kilometers per hour to 30, uh, the lighting profile can be, or the lighting flux can be reduced and that could help uh, later on with the future adaptation to save additional energy. The third one is about energy saving. So with the second interface looking downwards uh, towards the street, we can monitor and detect objects. Um, with this, we are able to save additional energy. So light on demand is here the right answer to it. With this, we ensure that light is only on or only at that specific level when we have really enough traffic on site. Um, taking care about our lighting norms. So here we are talking about additional savings from conventional towards LED plus sensor integration up to 80 to 80, 70 percent. The fourth point is within the with the luminaire, we have a, really a backbone within this digital city. So in future, we will have as well sensors which are able to monitor the traffic monitor specific environmental information 
we can grab and provide towards the um, towards the city manager. So with this information, a city manager is better uh, is able to understand better uh, what is happening on site. So he has better transparency to act with the specific data he is creating. And this is the fourth point uh, we are creating with this new standard interface. And we will have we are having now in the market. So this is it about session four. Uh, if you have a follow question, you can contact me uh, via mail. You can see it on this slide here. And I'm looking forward for our session number five, where we we'll talk about further details about our portfolio. And I will be happy if you join us and hear you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>